Hey everybody, it's Old School, and this is a video about my relatively low-end video card that is also very outdated. It is the Radeon HD 4350, and if you know a little bit about PC gaming, you know that the 4350 is not at all a gaming card. Even back in the day when I bought it, um, it was not a gaming card. It was uh, one of those cards that you bought because you wanted to watch high-definition video on your computer, and that was it. But the reason why I bought it back in the day was because I wanted to play the Sega Model 2 emulator and the integrated graphics in my computer at the time. Uh, back then I had an a, a AMD Athlon single core. Um, the integrated graphics were just absolutely terrible. And uh, that's why I bought this card. And I understood back then that this was not a, a card that... I wanted to use to play any kind of modern game even back then and certainly not now. So you're probably wondering why I've chosen to overclock this card. Well, uh, during the Steam holiday sales I came across um, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon which is one of the games that I really wanted to check out because it looked like a lot of fun and it was only five bucks and I was like you know what five dollars for, uh, for a game that might might be able to run decently on my antiquated video card. I think it's I think it's worth a shot because the game was just so cheap. So I bought it, and um, I ran it at the lowest settings, of course, and found out that it actually didn't run uh, too horribly bad on uh, low settings. I was shocked, and I was left with um, the thought that I wanted to run it maybe just a little bit better. I, I wanted the frame rate just to be a little bit more consistent and just a little bit higher in some places. So that's where I got the idea of overclocking this card to begin with. So I did a little bit of research on overclocking and found out that the most popular program that people use is MSI Afterburner. It's a free program that you can download and as you can see I have it right here in front of me and uh, the stock clocks on this card are 400 megahertz on the memory clock and 600 megahertz on the core clock. And uh, through ATI Catalyst, I'm able to boost the clocks up uh, 50 megahertz on uh, both the core clock and the memory clock, which does give the card a little bit of a push, but it's not enough to make a game that's just barely playable into a perfectly playable game. After much experimentation and a ton of computer restarts, I finally found the clocks that my computer is stable at. As you can see, the core clock now runs at 780 MHz and the memory clock runs at 560 MHz. This is quite an aggressive overclock for a card that is only passively cooled, meaning that it does not have a fan attached to the heatsink. So that's why you can't see any kind of adjustment for the fan on MSI Afterburner because there's simply no fan. Surprisingly, even though the video card is fanless, uh, at its hottest, it never gets any hotter than 70 to 71 degrees Celsius, believe it or not. So now let's take a look at some game footage to see the result of me overclocking this bad boy. Up first we have Far Cry 3. What I'm going to do before I show you the footage of the game is show you what settings I'm running the game at. Of course, with this being such a low-end card, there is absolutely no way I can actually run a game of this caliber on uh, 720 and definitely not 1080p. Uh, so I'm running this game on the lowest resolution possible, which is 800 by 600. Right now, I'm just going to click the hotkey, which overclocks my video card, to show you the difference in frame rate. As you saw after the keystroke, uh, it went from 17 frames per second to 23 frames per second. Now, when you're talking about a, a much more powerful GPU that is already running a game at uh, maybe you know 50 frames per second or something like that, adding another five frames, yeah, it, it'll it'll look a little bit better, but it's 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 not as impressive as uh, a low-end card going from 17 frames per second to 23 frames per second, which is the difference between a game being just barely playable to being completely playable and enjoyable. So now let's watch the frame rate as I move around the open world of Far Cry 3. Uh, as you'll see, with the video card uh, at stock clocks, 
it doesn't dip any lower than 16 frames per second and it seems to top out around 18, 18 and a half frames per second. In this footage I'm using Afterburner to collect the frame rate which is the reason why it's in the upper left hand corner and unfortunately sometimes the frame rate count does get lost in the skyline so I apologize for that. I tried to keep my head down when I discovered this uh, so the frame rate didn't get lost as much. Okay, so you're looking at similar footage with the video card overclocked now. You can see that the game runs uh, significantly smoother, um, but what is really key is that the game is uh, running over 20 frames per second. The reason why this is key is because it seems that anything under 20 frames per second uh, really starts to affect the controls, and 19 frames per second, it's not too bad, but by the time you get down to 16 or 15 frames per second, the controls really start to get sluggish and the game is no longer enjoyable to play. Up next we have Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed and like last time I'm going to show you the settings that I'm running this game at. So I'm running this game at 800 by 600 just like last time and uh, I'm able to set some of the settings to high instead of normal. Now normal is what you would normally see on the console but the high settings were put in just for PC so because of the overclock I'm actually able to get some of these high settings to help offset the uh, low resolution that I'm running this game at. Now because this game is not as GPU intensive as Far Cry 3 is, I'm able to run this game actually pretty decently already on stock clocks, but you'll notice that the frame rate is um, changing uh, quite a bit. It's, it's going from a little over 30 to a little under 30, uh, actually I think it even drops almost to 20 frames per second, which in a racing game, variations in the frame rate that bad. Uh, destroy the gameplay completely. Not only does it look bad, but the, the controls become very unruly and it just, it's not very enjoyable to play at all. After adding the overclock, you can see that the frame rate takes quite a bit of a jump, but there's still just one problem. The, the frame rate is still inconsistent. It still jumps between uh, 45 frames per second to like 35 frames per second, which is still bad. Even though it's smoother, it's still bad to have that much variation in the frame rate. So what needs to happen now is the frame rate needs to be capped at 30 frames per second. If I had a proper gaming card, a proper gaming card would be able to run this game at 60 frames per second on the highest detail, no sweat. But since I can't uh, even think about running this game at 60 frames per second at this high a detail, I need to uh, cap the frame rate. Luckily MSI Afterburner is able to cap the frame rate for me. I just go into the setting right here called frame limit and type in 30 and now the frame rate will be locked at 30 frames per second. Up next we have a game that did not require me to overclock it before I played it because I played it in a lower resolution. This is Bit Trip Runner 2. I initially played and beat this game in 1024 by 768 which is perfectly fine. I mean the, the resolution looked perfectly fine and 
I would have been okay if I had to play it in 800 by 600, but I was able to play it at that that high of a resolution. But when I tried to play it at the highest resolution, uh, it started getting really super jerky. And in this game, the frame rate must be perfect. It must be at 60 frames, and it must stay constantly at 60 frames, or else it will destroy. It will absolutely destroy this game. So um, what I did is I set the um, Resolution to 1280 by 1024. That's the max max resolution of my monitor, and here's the result. Lastly, we have an absolutely epic game. This is Rise of the Triad. This is the 2013 reimagining of the classic 1994 Rise of the Triad. On this game, I'm running medium settings at a resolution of 1024 by 640. There is no option for 800 by 600 like there is in uh, Sonic All-Star Racing or even Far Cry 3. Even at that uh, higher resolution, I'm still able to run this game at medium settings on the stock clock. But the biggest problem with this game uh, on the stock clocks is that the frame rate is just absolutely all over the place and it's teetering between uh, perfectly playable to almost not playable, which uh, means the controls are um, getting quite sluggish at the lower frame rates and the, the game is, is still just barely playable even in, in some places, even though some places I can get like 30 frames per second, but it is just absolutely over, all over the place.
after the video card is overclocked you can see that the frame rate uh, gets quite a bit of a bump and uh, even though the frame rate is still jumping all over the place the average frame rate of the game is much higher which means that the controls stay nice and tight and the game stays very very enjoyable to play Okay, so that's all I have for you guys today. I hope that it's been informative. I hope that you had fun seeing what uh, you can do with a relatively low, low-end card and not to mention a heavily outdated card. And maybe you'll want to try something like this on your own. One thing I do want to mention is that even if you have the exact same card that I do, you are not guaranteed to get the exact same overclock that I've achieved. The reason is uh, manufacturers have a certain percentage of tolerance. Uh, they usually have a, you know, like 3% lower or 3% higher, which means you could actually get more performance out of this card than I've been able to, or you may not get as much performance as I've been able to get out of this card. If you have any questions about this card or using MSI Afterburner, uh, please leave them in the comments section. I'll try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. And as always, thank you for watching.